Today in the news, we got some next-gen APUs and faster memory. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Ever since the launch of Ryzen CPUs, I've been personally super interested by their integrated graphics. It started with the 22 and 2400G that went up to four CPU cores and up to 11 Vega cores. And then we had the 32 and 3400G, which had the same setup. Now, for some reason, Past that, with the 4000G and the 5000G series of chips, the Vega graphics were maxed out at eight compute units. I mean, sure, they were still better because of the super high clock speeds, but still, I was a little bit disappointed that they dropped the 11 Vega core versions. Anyways, why am I talking about this? Well, now that it's the end of Vega graphics for APUs, we've been waiting for AMD to drop their RDNA-based ones. So far, with all of the information that was dug up through driver and leaks, we thought that the first to pop up would be with RDNA 2. It makes sense, right? I mean, the Steam Deck got it, the consoles got a sort of version of it, so it makes sense. But it looks like AMD is going to go straight to RDNA 3 here. Not only that, but the specs look pretty good too. This information comes from Kepler over on Twitter. He's a reputable source in data scavenging, and he says that Phoenix, that's the code name for the next generation of APUs, well, it will be sporting RDNA RDNA 3 graphics. Now, this completely breaks the roadmap that we've had for years now, but it's still expected that it would feature a Zen 4 CPU. It could be Zen 3 Plus, since I mean the new 6000 series laptop chips are compatible with DDR5 memory and the APUs are usually just laptop chips with a higher TDP, so it could be that, but I'm strongly leaning towards Zen 4, since, well, the 6000 chips already exist with Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 2. Wouldn't make any sense to go Zen 3 Plus and RDNA 3 for the desktop market. Now, in terms of specs, we don't really have anything, but if we just go by the current 12 compute units that we get in laptop chips today, and we add to that the rumored two times improvement in performance per watt, I think that AMD might have just killed low-end discrete graphics. No more 6500 XTs, guys. AMD is essentially pushing NVIDIA GPUs out of its laptops. It would make no sense to get an RTX 3050 laptop with an AMD chip that is that powerful. And I suspect that Intel has similar plans for their CPUs with integrated graphics. Now, it's going to suck to be Nvidia in a couple of years. I hope that their Grace CPUs can sort of sneak its way into the Windows ecosystem. In terms of when we'd see those chips, AMD kind of has a predictable cycle when it comes to laptops. It's always at CES, so in January. For the desktop APUs, yeah, AMD is all over the place on those, but mid-2023 seems like the most likely time frame. Lastly, with AMD, and damn, it's an AMD day today. It looks like Zen 4 is going to be a beast when it comes to memory speeds. Uh, Apacer, a memory module manufacturer, shared that Ryzen 7000 will support DDR5 at 5200 mega transfers per second. That's higher than Intel's Alder Lake, which supports up to 4800 mega transfers per second. Now, obviously, memory overclocking is a thing, and Intel's 12th gen can go higher. But this could mean that AMD's chips might scale to higher speeds. Pretty neat. Oh, by the way, quick little shout out to Canada Computers, my favorite computer store, because it's the only one that exists where I live. Anyways, they confirmed that the design of the refreshed 6000 series uh, will be this. They had a banner ad for it that was released a little too early. Essentially, it's like the 6800 XT Midnight Black Edition, but for the whole refreshed line. It's pretty cool. These cards are rumored to release on May 10th, so pretty soon. Then let's do our free game check. Right now on the Epic Store, you can get yourself two pretty funny games. There's Paradigm, which revives the good old point and click adventure genre. I remember watching some gameplay of it a couple of years ago and it's really good. Now I get to play the whole thing for free. And there's also the geriatric sandbox game called Just Die Already. It's an open world game where you just got kicked out of the retirement home and you have to try and survive the real world. Uh, not so real actually. It reminded me a lot of Goat Simulator when I saw the trailer, and it turns out that it's because, well, it's made by the same designers. It also has a multiplayer mode and PvP, so definitely check it out. In any case, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.